Tonight, Ontario faces day one of proof of vaccination policy. As of today, Ontarians will need to provide proof of vaccination before entering certain high-risk indoor settings. I'm Craig Huckerby. You're going to need a jacket tonight if you're heading out and an extra blanket on the bed because we are getting really cold tonight. I'm Jacob Moore here with all your sports. The Sioux Thunderbirds are tuning up and getting ready for their home opener on Friday and they just acquired a new player. I'll have more details coming up. News at Night with Colette Linden. Good evening. Welcome to News at Night. I'm Colette Linden. Direct from Queen's Park alongside Christine Elliott and Sylvia Jones, Premier Doug Ford addressed the province over the necessity as well as the concerns surrounding Ontario's proof of vaccination policy. This morning, Ontario launched its own vaccine certificate. As of today, Ontarians will need to provide proof of vaccination before entering certain high-risk indoor settings, including restaurants, bars, casinos, theatres and gyms. These settings were chosen based on the advice of the Chief Medical Officer of Health. The policy does not apply to outdoor spaces where the risk of transmission is much lower. I know that many people are concerned about this certificate and what it means for your civil liberties. I know that this is a divisive issue and that's understandable. I want you to know that I hear you. Our government understands your concerns. And it's no secret that I was reluctant to use this tool. But our highest concern, what keeps me up at night, is ensuring we never lose our hard-fought progress. We can't afford to shut down again or experience a sudden surge in cases, like we're seeing in other provinces across the country. And I truly believe that this tool, these certificates, they're the best chance we have to get through this coming months without having to move backwards. But Ontario is reporting 463 new cases of COVID-19 and seven additional deaths today. It is the smallest daily increase of cases the province has seen since August the 17th and the first time the province has reported fewer than 500 cases since the end of August. Health Minister Christine Elliott says 332 of the new cases are in individuals who are not fully vaccinated or who have an unknown vaccination status. The rolling seven-day average has dipped below 700 for the first time in September, now sitting at 692. The Ontario government is providing more than $2.2 million to help five manufacturing companies expand operations in the Perry Sound District. The funding will help create 38 new jobs and boost economic development throughout the region. Norm Miller, member of Provincial Parliament for Perry Sound Muskoka, is happy to see manufacturing companies committing to local communities. Businesses like Lofthouse Manufacturing there in Burke Falls create the stable, well-paying year-round jobs that sustain the towns and villages throughout the Perry Sound District. The following funding is being delivered through the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation. The NOHFC promotes economic prosperity across Northern Ontario by providing financial assistance to projects big and small, rural and urban that stimulate recovery, growth, job creation and skills development. Doug Ford! Premier Doug Ford's approval rating is up slightly from three months ago, but still down from his all-time high back in June of 2020. Back that time, Ford's approval rating dropped another 8% since March when it fell 40%, which was his approval rating when the Progressive Conservatives won a majority government in June of 2018. According to the latest survey, his approval now stands at 42%. With his eye on the provincial election slated for June of 2022, he's just two percentage points higher in the approval ratings than he was when he was first elected in 2018. Ford's approval rating is still down 20% since that time, which was after the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic pandemic, and at that time, his rating hit a high of 62%. Sue Online has learned the identity of the individual who shot at police officers and subsequently suffered a fatal gunshot wound. In order to preserve the integrity of the investigation and privacy of the family, the assailant will re remain anonymous. Individuals close to the assailant disclosed that the accused had a previous run-in with police during the past year, which had led to weapon charges being laid against him. He was held for bail and then released by the courts. 
At this point, it would be fair to say his bail conditions would have included a weapons possession ban. SIU communications specialist Christy Dinette spoke with Sue online via phone from her office in southern Ontario, saying that there are two subject officers and seven witness officers. Investigators have started interviewing witnesses and those officers are compelled to speak with investigators due to the SIU Act. Danette went on to say that two forensic investigators were working at the Pine Street scene yesterday and that the street would remain closed for the duration of the investigation, presumably until after the postmortem of the 19-year-old male who was completed. According to a former police officer, Sue Online was able to speak with, the two subject officers are most likely off-duty until they are cleared by the SIU of any wrongdoing. On September the 18th, officers with patrol services charged 33-year-old Carlin Armstrong with possession of property obtained by crime. Around 12 o'clock in the afternoon, officers responded to a call of a break and enter in progress in the 800 block of Lake Street. Upon arrival, officers determined a man had stolen security cameras from the exterior of the residence, however, did not enter the residence. A short time later, officers located the man matching the description from the incident on Lake Street in the area of Paladin Avenue. Officers identified the accused and lay charged. Charges. He was later released on an appearance notice and is scheduled to appear in court on November the 8th. A veteran Michigan weatherman was fired for refusing a COVID-19 shot, saying those who do not want the vaccine are being bludgeoned with fear by vaccine pushers. Carl Bonak, who was a meteorologist for great television station WLUC-TV, said he was booted after refusing to comply with the company's vaccine mandates. Bonak said in a lengthy Facebook post that his employer requires proof of inoculation from anyone entering his properties. President Joe Biden earlier this month announced he would use an emergency order to force businesses with 100 or more employees to mandate vaccines or weekly testing. Michigan meteorologist Carl Bonak says he lost his job after the refusal. Medical experts say the vaccine reduces serious COVID-19 complications for those who take it. But Bonak, who has been working for the station since 1988, said he doesn't believe the vaccine should be forced upon anyone. Great Television said it would not comment on personal matters, but provided DailyMail.com with a copy of its vaccination policy. It required all employees in a management position to be fully vaccinated by the 15th of September and all other workers to be fully vaccinated by October 1. Bonac is the latest television personality to lose their job over the vaccine mandates. ESPN reporter Allison Williams said earlier this month that she will not be working on the sidelines of college football games this season. She refused to comply with the network's vaccine mandate because she and her husband were trying to conceive their second child. Well, fall is officially, what, two hours old now? Not bad, we are seeing some clearing. A little cool today, but it is gonna get very cold tonight. And also we have some rain to tell you about for your Thursday. I'll do that right after the break. On TV News, supported by the Canadian Bush Plain Heritage Center, where adventure takes off. On TV News, supported by Gary Cherbinski. Exit Realty, Lake Superior. Buying a home is a big decision, so is choosing the right agent. Call Gary Cherbinski, broker at Exit Realty, Lake Superior, 705-257-5432. On TV News, supported by Maker North, 3D printing, laser cutting, 3D design, education, prototyping, and more. Maker North, whatever it takes. Welcome back, everyone. Well, let's take a look at the satellite loop. And this is the last 12 hours. So you can see most of the day where we're under some uh, considerably cl uh, cloudiness. We do see a little break here now as the end of this loop. And we should start to see uh, full clearing for later on tonight. And that is why our temperatures are going to be dropping off quite a bit tonight. We'll go to that in just a bit. But I will show you what's going on as far as the radar goes. So this is that big uh, plume of uh, moisture heading up. This looks like it's missing us, but what's going to happen? This is a low pressure system right here. As this gets up to about uh, the Lake Huron, it's going to kind of come back and that's what's going to give us the rain for our day tomorrow. We're going to see that wrap around effect around that low pressure system. So it looks like we're going to see showers starting sometime 
Thursday afternoon and then pretty much lasting right through Friday. As far as temperatures go, this is why we're getting that extra blanket tonight. Four degrees here in the Sioux, plus one in Wawa and Timmins. Very chilly air as that high pressure system builds in. It's a, it's a very cold high pressure system and we're definitely going to feel it tonight. Uh, those temperatures not going to rebound all that much over the next couple of days. We'll take a look at the systems map for you. So this is how we better draw it for you. So here's that low pressure system and as that comes up we're going to see that fill in. And it's just going to wrap around this low pressure system in a counterclockwise fashion around a low pressure system. So expect when the rain gets here it's going to stick around for a good day at least. Not full, sh uh, full showers and heavy showers but like misty scattered showers, the annoying showers. This is what we look like for the next 12 hours though. We're going to see that clearing. We're going to see some cloudy periods tonight just because that is not that moisture. It's just not going anywhere. But 14 degrees for your evening with some northerly winds, 4 degrees overnight with clear conditions. And then we start to see some clouds build back in for the morning, but not bad. We're going to see some sun as well at 5 degrees. But then during the day, we're going to start seeing those showers develop in the afternoon. Temperatures falling off to 13 degrees for your high on Thursday. So that's well off the mark. That's about 5 or 6 degrees cooler than we should be. 15 degrees for your Friday with those showers hanging on. We should start to see some clearing Friday night into your weekend. Not looking all that bad. We kind of dry out. Our temperatures kind of rebound slowly up to next Wednesday only to give us some more showers for next Wednesday. That is your weather for right now, your first day of fall. Enjoy it. We're going to send it over to Jacob who has the latest on the NHL training camps. Jacob. Well, Craig, the NHL training camp is finally underway, but there's some concern coming out of Leaf Nation. There's a certain star player who's on the injury reserve, and fans are starting to panic. I'll let you know who it is and have more details on the injury right after this break. On TV News, supported by Tammy Ovi. Are you looking for an agent who confidently knows the culture and community of Sault Ste. Marie? Call Tammy Ovi, 705-971-0171. On TV News, supported by United Way. Help make your community a better place. Show your local love and donate today. Another Sioux native is continuing his hockey career right here in Sioux St. Marie. The Sioux Thunderbirds have signed forward Cooper Foster to a contract. Foster, who was drafted by the Ottawa 67s in the OHL selection draft, is excited to be joining the team here in Sioux St. Marie. He did play two games in the OHL for the preseason with the Ottawa 67s, putting up one point in the two games. Foster is looking to continue his player development and feels that the Thunderbirds is the right place for him to be at. Foster is expected to make his season debut on Friday with the team for their home opener versus the Blind River Beavers. The Toronto Blue Jays are playing some do or die baseball right now as they're in the final stretch of the regular season, battling for one of those wildcard positions. The Jays did what they needed to do last night and were able to take down the Tampa Bay Rays with a team effort. They got great pitching from Manoa who was able to go six innings with over five strikeouts. They were also able to get some great defense plus the bats were awake enough to get this victory, winning the game 4-2. Jays fans were also watching the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees who also won both of their games, so things are still where they were standing yesterday. With the Boston Red Sox in first in the wild card, the Toronto Blue Jays in second, and the New York Yankees in third, just half a game behind the Jays. The top two teams in the wild card positions will make the playoffs and battle it out to try to make it to the next round. The CHL announced that the 2022 Memorial Cup will be hosted by the QMJHL's own St. John Sea Dogs. This will be the first time the Sea Dogs have ever hosted the Memorial Cup, however, it won't be the first time they've played in the tournament. The team played in 2011, 2012, 
and 2017, capturing the title back in 2011. The Memorial Cup has been cancelled the last two seasons due to COVID-19 related issues. The Memorial Cup is when a team from each major league in the Canadian Hockey League battle it out to see which team is the best of the best. Pagan Calgary. Here's Austin Matthews, a chance, put it up top and in! Austin Matthews and the Leafs have the lead! The NHL training camp is underway today and all eyes are on the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Toronto Maple Leafs had another disappointing playoff stint last year and they're looking to fix and learn from their mistakes. There is already some controversy, however, coming out of their training camp. To start off the training camp, we see that Toronto Maple Leafs center Austin Matthews is on the long-term injury reserve. The Leafs general manager Kyle Dubas told reporters although he's on the injury reserve, he will be good to go for the start of the season. We don't expect Matthews to be fully participating in training camp, but he will definitely be good to go. The star forward won the Rocket Richard Trophy last year for most goals scored in a season as he scored 41 goals last year. The Sault Ste. Marie Sports Hall of Fame is pleased to announce that they are now accepting inductees into the Hall of Fame. Any individuals or teams in the following categories are an athlete, coach, a builder, and a team. The inductees into the Hall of Fame are people or organizations who have made a big impact into the sports world here in Sault Ste. Marie. The deadline for nominees is 4.30 p.m. on Friday, October the 8th, 2021. The inductees' plaques will be engraved and hung at John Rhodes Arena, where fans and spectators can have a look and see them displayed. We have one game going on in the CFL and it's a bit of an interesting one to watch. We have the Hamilton Tiger Cats versus the Ottawa Red Blacks. Neither of these teams started off the way they wanted to as the Hamilton Tiger Cats were expected to completely demolish the Eastern Conference while the Red Blacks were expected to be okay this year. The Hamilton Tiger Cats currently have a record of three wins and three losses while the Ottawa Red Blacks have not won a game since week one and are now one in five. For both of these teams they need to start stringing these wins together. For the Hamilton Tiger Cats, they need to keep winning to try to string together a bit of a winning streak and continue to hold top in the Eastern Conference. They will have to do this without their starting quarterback Jeremiah Masoli and their backup quarterback Evans as it'll be up to Dave Whitford, the third string quarterback, to get the job done. Whitford passed for 149 yards and rushed for 35 yards in the team's last week victory versus the Calgary Stampeders. For the Ottawa Red Blacks, they are just trying to climb out of this massive hole. They've really struggled this year, including going back and forth between different quarterbacks. Dominic Davis will be the starting quarterback in tonight's game, but I feel he will have a short leash. The Red Blacks know if they don't start winning soon, they can kiss their playoff hopes goodbye in this shortened season. Well, that's it for sports, but always stay locked to Sue Online and on TV. We always have you covered. You know what else we have covered? News. We got the rest of your newscast right after this break. On TV News, supported by Tenaris Algoma Tubes. Kickstart your career. Tenaris is rapidly growing in Sault Ste. Marie and looking for individuals interested in rewarding production and technician roles. If you are ready for a progressive career opportunity with benefits in advanced manufacturing, then please send your resume to resumes at tenaris.com. On TV News, supported by The Refinery, the leader in women's fitness and transformations. 624 Wellington Street West in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Call 705-255-8895 for more information. Family owned and operated, A.G. Quinnell Well Drilling has been serving Sault Ste. Marie and surrounding areas since 1968. For a free estimate, call 705-779-3909. A.G. Quinnell Well Drilling, available for all your water needs. 1944, Second Line West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. A.G. Quinnell Well Drilling. Call 705-779-3909 for a free estimate today. Despite long lines at a number of polling stations on election day, early data is suggesting voter turnout was actually near a historic low for a federal election. According to preliminary data from Elections Canada, the turnout was at least 59%, which is the lowest rate in more than a decade, and just above the all-time federal election low. Some believe concerns due to the pandemic may have kept people away from polling stations and is the main reason that advanced voting and mail-in ballots were so popular. This figure will change with a million mail-in ballots still needing to be verified. Elections Canada also needs to count ballots by those who were not registered but showed up at polling stations. 
Pauline's Place Nonprofit Homes, Inc. is ready to organize Glambition, a community event to emphasize the alarming rate at which homelessness is spreading in the community and raising funds to support Pauline's Place's day-to-day -day operations. In addition to that, multiple community organizations are coming together to help Pauline's Place observe Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week and celebrate the community as one. They are trying to make it as multicultural as possible and need your support. Pauline's Place is calling on to the local artists and organizations to put their name in for the event. The event is to take place on Saturday, November 20th at 6 p.m. until 10 at the Canadian Bush Plain Heritage Centre. The entry is by donation only and the minimum donation is $10 per head. Helping to fight hunger has never been easier. This Saturday, St. Vincent Place is holding their 11th annual Big Blue Food Drive. To donate, place your non-perishable goods in any box or bag at your curb by 10 a.m. on Saturday. A team of volunteers who will have St. Vincent Place magnets on the side of their cars will drop by and pick it up. Every donation collected will be used toward the food bank, helping to feed more than 2,000 local families every year. St. Vincent's Place is expecting numbers to be significantly higher this year, and donations will also support the Lunches for Learning program. For details about the Big Blue Food Drive or if your donation was not picked up, by 2 p.m. on Saturday, contact Sarah at 705-253-2770, extension 4. Our newsroom has received reports of an accident just south of White River. Witnesses say a collision occurred between a motorhome and a semi around 12.30 this afternoon. Sue Online and on TV will update you as details become available. That's your news at night for Wednesday, September the 22nd. On behalf of Craig Huckabee and Jacob Moore, I'm Colette Linden. Have a great evening and we'll see you tomorrow.